Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith and this is your place for professional video production techniques. The subject of this reveal, when to use the match frame technique in Adobe Premiere Pro. If you've been editing for any significant amount of time, then Match Frame is something you probably use quite a bit. Um, actually, Premiere Pro only got it when Final Cut users screamed loud enough and asked for that feature. So since then, Match Frame and Reverse Match Frame have been added. Um, and I'm going to show you what they do. Let's have a look. Okay. So let's say I am over top of this clip here. Let me just move this out of the way. This clip right here. And this clip already has an in and out point. If you double click on this clip, you'll see that in and out point in the source monitor. And I can zoom in and out of that clip with this zoom controls underneath. When you double click on a clip from the timeline into the source monitor, you're actually affecting that clip. So if I rem if I change the tail, you can see I leave a hole in there. And that confuses some editors when they want to use the same clip, but they want to use a different part of the clip. And what they're not understanding is you can't do that with the clip that's in the timeline because you're editing that clip. There is a master clip in the project bin. You need to find it. You need to load it into the source monitor and then you need to um, edit that and then put that into the timeline. It sounds like a lot, but that's what Match Frame can do. I'll show you what I mean. Let's have a look. So I'm going to move my playhead closer to the beginning and I'll tap the F key for Match Frame and you can see on the left hand side, it looks exactly like double clicking on it, but when I change the duration, it's not changing in the timeline. This is a new clip because it's the equivalent of opening the actual clip down here in the project bin. So now when I want to add a new cut from this, say I want this opening to come from him raising up and that he's actually talking on the phone. This is a new cut. I'm going to insert this into the beginning of my clip. And you can do that any number of ways. I'm a mouse guy, so I'm dragging and holding the control key on Windows Command on Mac. And you can see I get those forward facing arrows. Boom, everything moves over. Now I've got the opening shot of him on the phone. And then later on, he is greeting the woman right there. So that's a great use for match frame instead of having to find that. And I mean, you can right click on a clip and find it in the project bin, then load it in. It's just a heck of a lot easier. People that count on match frame really count on match frame. Now, match frame does depend on a couple of things, whether a clip is selected or not, and track targeting. This is really specific. Okay, let's show you what I, I mean. So let's put this clip above and of course, now when the playhead goes over that, it's going to show that clip. Well, what happens if I have nothing selected and I tap the F key? Well, you notice I've matched frame, but if I turn off the top one, I've actually matched frame to the bottom clip. Why is that? Well, it's because the track targeting is set to V1 and the top clip is not selected. Either of those will change what match frame does. Let's have a look. So on the left, you can see track targeting is on V1. If I turn that off, and uh, turn on V2, hit the F key. Now I'm doing a match frame to that one, okay? If I turn all of these off and tap the F key, then I am doing a match frame to nothing, nothing at all. I have to have at least a track targeted or a clip selected. So I have no track targeting on, but a clip selected, F, match frame. Again, no hard and fast rules depends on your workflow and how you work. Some people do a lot of track targeting. Some people don't even know what those darn things are there for, but that's what it's there for. Now that's match frame. There's also reverse match frame. And this one works uh, with where you uh, will look at uh, a clip that you have in the project bin. So let's have a look. Okay, so I'm going to move my playhead away from this area, double click uh, on this clip, and you can see, again, there's my in and out points that I've set for this. If I sh hit Shift-R, 
that's reverse match frame, it's going to look at the clip that I loaded into the source monitor and find that frame in my timeline. Let's uh, load this one over here and we can see there's our in and out point, shift R, reverse match frame. That one doesn't really make a lot of sense when you've got four or five clips, but imagine if you've got an hour and a half feature film in here and you want to quickly check to see where that particular clip is. So match frame, very useful, very powerful. A lot of people count on that every single day. Uh, and like I said, there are a couple of uh, important things with track targeting and selecting. Alrighty. Well, hopefully you found this informative and uh, I want to say thank you very much to all the support we're getting here on Video Revealed. Really appreciate it. Lots of great comments. Keep me on my toes, asking for new tutorials. I love that. So hopefully you found this tutorial. If you're new for uh, Video Revealed, then please subscribe to Video Revealed. And if you're not already an Adobe Creative Cloud user, there's a link in the description for you to get your free 30-day trial. And until next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to get you looking your best.